All right, everyone, ready to dig in a little. Today, we're going deep on something that's, well, literally right under our feet, soil. We're standing on it, but how often do we really think about it, right? Exactly. Specifically, we're talking soil carbon. It's a phrase you're probably seeing everywhere these days. Totally. Especially with all the talk about sustainable agriculture and everything. But honestly, when I see soil carbon, it's like, what's the big deal? It's more than just a buzzword, that's for sure. Right. Like, why should I care how much carbon is in my dirt? <laughs> so to help us break it all down, we're tapping into some insights from Pharmanaut. They're doing some seriously cool stuff with tech in the farming world. Yeah, they are. And their article jumped right into these different levels of soil carbon. Like it went from very low all the way to very high. Mm -hmm. For someone like me who's, you know, just starting to wrap my head around all this, what does that actually mean on the ground? It's a good question mm. because it makes you picture what's going on down there, you know, where the roots are. Totally. Is it as simple as like good dirt versus bad dirt or is there more to it? The article used this analogy of a sponge, which I thought was really helpful. Yeah. Okay. So high carbon soil. Imagine a brand new super absorbent sponge. Okay. I can see that. It holds on to water, holds on to nutrients, all the good stuff a plant needs. Makes sense. But low carbon, that's more like that dried out crumbly sponge that's been sitting around. Yeah. The water just runs right through. Exactly. And it takes those precious nutrients along with it. Not what you want for healthy plants. That's for sure. So basically, if I'm a plant, I want to be growing in that nice, fluffy, high carbon soil. You got it. But here's where it gets interesting. The ideal carbon level, it's not the same everywhere. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. If you think about drier climates, places with sandy soil, they actually need higher carbon levels because they need all the help they can get holding on to moisture. That's wild. I never thought of it like that. It's almost like the soil has to work harder in those conditions. So even if I don't have a farm, this all still impacts me, right? Mm -hmm. Because better soil it ultimately means like... More reliable food for everyone. Exactly. And probably more affordable, too. And it's not just about the food itself, either. Oh, right. Healthy soil. It's more resilient, especially with climate change and everything. More resilient how? It can handle those extreme weather events better, you know, like droughts and floods. That makes sense. Which is going to be super important for making sure we can keep growing food in the future, food security, and all that. It all comes back to those ripple effects. Now, Pharmanaut was talking about how they can actually measure this stuff from space with satellites, which is incredibly cool and futuristic sounding. But they also mentioned other ways to get this info, some simpler, some more complex. So for someone, say a farmer, who's trying to figure out what's going on in their soil, how do they know which method to use? It's like any other part of farming, you know? Gotta choose the right tool for the job. I like that. Pharmanaut satellite tech, that's amazing for getting the big picture. Yeah, you're seeing your whole farm from space. Right. Exactly. You see patterns, how things change over time. You can really make informed decisions about managing your land as a whole. So it's good for that overall strategy. Yeah. But let's say you've got a smaller area or you need to zoom in on a specific problem. Then those more traditional soil tests, those might be the way to go. So it's about finding that balance, like big picture versus the really detailed stuff. Exactly. Plus, and I always say this, we can't forget good old fashioned observation. Right. Get out in the field. <laughs> Sometimes the best tool is still your own two hands, feeling the soil, seeing how the water drains, even just looking at how healthy your plants are. Technology is great, but it doesn't replace that connection to the land. That makes a lot of sense. You can't just rely on data alone. Got to get your hands dirty, literally. <clears throat> Speaking of getting our hands dirty, this is where I really started to get interested in the article mm -hmm. because, yeah, we've talked about measuring carbon, but they also mentioned ways to actually increase it in the soil. Like there are things farmers can do to actually make their soil healthier. Absolutely. And it's not even as complicated as you might think. Oh, really? It's not about some high tech solution. It's more like going back to basics. So it's not just about measuring the carbon. It's about actually building it up in the soil. I thought that was fascinating. Yeah, it's a whole different way of thinking about it. Totally. And the article mentioned a few different ways to do this. And honestly, this is where I felt like I had a bit of an aha moment reading this. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like some super complicated, you know, high tech solution. It's actually about going back to basics a little. The simplest solutions are often the best, right? Right. So like one thing they talked about was reducing tillage, like how much you're tilling the soil. Why is that so important for storing carbon? Well, 
when you think about what happens when you till the soil, you're like churning it all up, right? Exactly. You're disrupting this whole ecosystem that's going on beneath the surface. It's like imagine a thriving forest floor, right? You've got layers of leaves decomposing these intricate fungal networks, all these creatures doing their thing. Yeah. It's like this whole hidden world down there. Right. And tilling, it's like taking a plow to that forest floor. You're disrupting all those natural processes that help keep carbon in the soil. And it ends up re releasing carbon back into the atmosphere, right? Exactly. Okay. So less disruption basically means happier soil microbes. Happier, healthier, more productive. Which means more carbon stays locked up underground, which is what we want. You got it. And those microbes, they're the real heroes of the story here. Because they're the ones actually doing the work. Yeah. They break down the organic matter. They build the soil structure. They're essential for sequestering carbon. So how do we keep those little guys happy? Besides not tilling, of course. Well, another way to give them a helping hand is by planting cover crops. Oh, right. Cover crops. Those were mentioned in the article. So remind me, what are those again? Basically, it's planting something in between your main crops instead of just leaving the field bare. Okay, so it's like giving the soil a break. Kind of. It's more like tucking your soil in with a cozy blanket. I like that visual. Cover crops, they do so much. They help prevent erosion. They suppress weeds. And as they decompose, they add all this valuable organic matter back into the soil. Which feeds the microbes. Exactly. And that further boosts carbon storage. It's this beautiful cycle. I love it when it all connects like that. It's amazing, isn't it? You feed the microbes, they build up the soil, which helps store carbon, which makes the whole system more resilient. And then we can grow more food, and it just keeps going. Exactly. And it's not just about individual practices either. It's about how they work together. Like the article also mentioned crop rotation. Right. Because different crops, they all have different impacts on the soil, right? I vaguely remember learning about that in school. Absolutely. Think of it like providing a diverse diet for your soil microbes. Okay. So instead of just eating the same thing all the time. You mix it up different crops they release different nutrients as they grow and they have different root systems which is good for the soil yeah rotating them helps prevent the depletion of certain nutrients disrupts pest and disease cycles keeps those microbes happy and diverse it's like we're not just growing plants we're tending to this entire ecosystem under our feet that's a great way to put it and speaking of tending to things the article touched on some really cool high-tech developments mm -hmm. like they mentioned gene editing and ai which honestly sounds kind of futuristic to me. It does, doesn't it? Like, are we talking robots tending fields anytime soon? What role do you see these technologies playing in, you know, the future of soil health and all this? Gene editing to design crops, like specifically for carbon storage. It does sound pretty sci-fi, honestly. It's definitely cutting edge stuff. Yeah. But in a good way, yeah. So, like, what are we actually talking about here? What could that look like? Okay, so imagine crops with, say deeper root systems, more extensive, you know. So they're pulling even more carbon into the soil. Exactly. Or imagine tailoring crops to like very specific soil types and climates. So they're even better at storing carbon in those exact conditions. Exactly. It's about working with nature in a really targeted way. It really does seem like there are so many possibilities. And it's not just gene editing, right? We were talking about AI before, too. Right, right. I'm picturing robots out in the field. Is that too much of a jump? Well, the robots might be a little ways off still. Okay. But, but AI is already making a big difference, even now. Really? How so? Well, think about it. Farmers, they have to think about so many different things, right? Yeah, like what? Soil conditions, the weather, pests, you name it. And AI can help make sense of all that. So it can, like analyze all that data. Exactly. From satellites, sensors out in the field, even data from individual plants. And it can help farmers figure out how to optimize, well, everything. Irrigation, fertilizer. So they're using the exact right amount at the exact right time. Yes. And it all goes back to making the soil as healthy as possible. Wow, that's pretty incredible. It does feel like with all this new tech, though, it's easy to get I don't know, caught up in the excitement of it all. Are we in danger of forgetting about those more basic things we were talking about before, mm. like reducing tillage and all that? That's a really good point. And honestly, it's something I think about a lot. Because those are still important, right? Absolutely. It's like, as amazing as all this technology is, we can't forget about the fundamentals. Yeah. Reducing tillage, cover crops, diverse crop rotations, those are the building blocks of a healthy system. So it's not like we have to choose, you know, like... It's tech 
or these other practices. Exactly, it's about using them together. The tech can help us maximize those practices, but we have to start with a solid foundation. I like that. It's like building a house, right? Yeah. You need a good foundation before you can do anything else. Perfect analogy. And the best part is all of this, it really empowers farmers. How so? Because it gives them the information and the tools to make the best decisions for their own land. They're the ones who are going to make a real difference here. They're the ones on the front lines for sure. Okay, and speaking of empowering farmers, there was one more thing I wanted to ask you about from the article. Carbon markets. Can you remind me how those work again? Sure. In the simplest terms, carbon markets, they let farmers get paid for storing carbon in their soil. Wait, really? So they're actually getting rewarded for doing the right thing for the environment? Exactly. That's amazing. That seems like a win-win to me. It could be huge. It could change how we farm, but also like h how we value the land itself. That's a really good point. Because for so long, it's almost like we've taken the soil for granted. Absolutely. But with carbon markets, suddenly there's a financial incentive to take care of it. It's like we're finally recognizing the true value of healthy soil. Exactly. Wow. It's amazing how all of this is connected, isn't it? Like soil health, mm -hmm. the future of our food, climate change. So as we wrap up here, is there one thing, one key takeaway you hope people walk away with from our deep dive today? You know, for me, it really comes down to remembering that soil, it's not just dirt, it's alive. It's this whole ecosystem under our feet. And we need to treat it that way, right? Exactly. How we treat the soil, it impacts everything. It really makes you appreciate it in a whole new way, doesn't it? Like we literally walk all over it every day, mm. but it's what makes everything possible. I love that. And the amazing thing is even small changes can have a big impact. You don't have to be a farmer to make a difference. <laughs> Maybe it's starting a compost bin or yeah. thinking about where your food comes from, mm. or even just taking a moment to like really appreciate that handful of dirt. Beautifully said. Well, on that note, I think we'll wrap things up for today. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the world of soil carbon. It's been fascinating. Until next time, keep learning, keep asking questions, and I guess keep digging deeper, both literally and figuratively.